The Book of Revelation, Chapter 15 Beginning our study now in Revelation, Chapter 15, Verse 1. Then I saw another sign in heaven, great and marvelous, seven angels who had seven plagues, which are the last, because in them the wrath of God is finished. And I saw something like a sea of glass mixed with fire, and those who had been victorious over the beast and his image and the number of his name standing on the sea of glass, holding harps of God. Revelation chapter 15, verse 3, And they sang the song of Moses, the bondservant of God, and the song of the Lamb, saying, Great and marvelous are your works, O Lord God, the Almighty. Righteous and true are your ways, King of the nations. Who will not fear, O Lord, and glorify your name? For you alone are holy. For all the nations will come and worship before you, for your righteous acts have been revealed. The first thing that we see in this passage is that there are seven angels with the seven last plagues. This is the last cycle of seven in the book of Revelation. You may recall that the outline of the book of Revelation is built on a series of sevens. God's message to seven churches, a scroll with seven seals that represent seven judgments, seven angels with seven trumpet plagues, and now seven angels with the seven last plagues. The number seven denotes completion or fulfillment of God's work, and these seven last plagues will be used to crush all rebellion against God's authority on the earth. The second thing that we see in this passage is God's sevenfold pattern of judgment. God uses the least amount of pain possible to deal with sin. The longer that a sinner persists in rebellion, the worse the punishment gets. We see this illustrated in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 5. And you, you Christians, you have forgotten the exhortation which speaks to you as to sons. My son, do not despise the chastening of the Lord, nor be discouraged when you are rebuked by him. For whom the Lord loves, he chastens and scourges every son whom he receives. In this passage, we see that God uses three different levels of punishment for sin. The lightest and easiest is rebuke. But if rebuke fails to result in repentance, God uses chastening, which is additional discomfort, additional pain. Then, if there is still no repentance, there is scourging, intense pain. So there is an escalation of punishment when sinners refuse to repent. This principle of escalating punishment is beautifully illustrated in Leviticus chapter 26. Here, in Leviticus chapter 26, God has established a covenant with Israel. He has promised to bless them. However, if they turn from him into sin, God says in Leviticus chapter 26, verses 14 through 17, that he would punish them for their sins. Then, in Leviticus chapter 26, verse 18, we read, And if, in spite of this, you will not listen to me, then I will discipline you again sevenfold for your sins. In the verses that follow, God illustrates additional punishments that he would bring on Israel. Then in verse 21, he says, Then, if you will walk contrary to me and will not listen to me, I will continue striking you sevenfold for your sins. So we see this sevenfold escalation of punishment. Additional plagues are poured out, and then in verse 23, God says, And if by this discipline you are not turned to me, but walk contrary to me, then I also will walk contrary to you, 
and I myself will strike you sevenfold for your sins. This sevenfold escalation of punishment is the backbone for the book of Revelation. God uses sevenfold punishment to bring about repentance, but when the world refuses to repent, he escalates by a factor of seven each time. The seven last plagues represent scourging, the last stage in God's punishment to crush all rebellion against him. The third thing that we see in this passage is that the victorious saints are standing before God's throne. John sees those who had been victorious over the beast and his image and the number of his name. The devil has been waging war on God's people ever since the events of the Garden of Eden. But after the sounding of the seventh trumpet, it is the saints who are victorious and the beast is destroyed. This revelation from God would encourage all Christians from John's time until the end of the Great Tribulation. Even though evil appears to be winning now, God's people ultimately will prevail. It is God's people who will be victorious. These victorious saints are holding harps, worshiping God, and standing on something like a sea of glass mixed with fire. John is not speaking literally here. He is using a metaphor. It is like a sea of glass. His words fail him. He is not able to adequately describe this. So he uses a figure of speech. We've seen this sea of glass before in Revelation chapter 4, verse 6. And before the throne, there was something like a sea of glass, like crystal, and in the center and around the throne, four living creatures, full of eyes in front and behind. So this sea of glass is located before God's throne. So we have an image here of the saints before God's throne, worshiping him on a sea of glass with harps. This is very similar to imagery from the Old Testament. We see in 1 Chronicles chapter 15, verse 16, David also ordered the Levite leaders to appoint a choir of Levites who were singers and musicians to sing joyful songs to the accompaniment of harps, lyres, and cymbals. So this imagery of the worship of Israel at the tabernacle is very similar to the saints worshiping God before his throne with harps and songs of joy. The fourth thing that we see in this passage is that the victorious saints are singing the song of Moses. This song is found in Deuteronomy chapter 32, not Exodus chapter 15 as some commentators believe. In Exodus chapter 15 verse 1 we see, Then Moses and the Israelites sang this song to the Lord. I will sing to the Lord for he is highly exalted. The horse and rider he has thrown into the sea. The text says that Moses sang this song after the Red Sea crossing, not that he was the author of it. The subject matter of Exodus 15 doesn't fit the occasion of Revelation chapter 15. There are no chariots being thrown into the Red Sea in the book of Revelation. So the content doesn't match the scene. The Greek uses the definite article in the phrase, the song of Moses, showing that this is the unique song authored by Moses. The song of Moses in Deuteronomy chapter 32 is a prophecy that Israel will fail to obey God and evil will befall them in the latter days. Then God will save them and punish their enemies, as we see in Deuteronomy chapter 31, verses 14 through 30. So the theme and content of this song in Deuteronomy chapter 32 fits the situation of Israel at the end of the Great Tribulation much better than Exodus chapter 15. Notice the content within the song of Moses in Deuteronomy 
chapter 32, verse 39. Look now, I myself am he. There is no other God but me. I am the one who kills and gives life. I am the one who wounds and heals. No one can be rescued from my powerful hand. Now I raise my hand to heaven and declare, as surely as I live, when I sharpen my flashing sword and begin to carry out justice, I will take revenge on my enemies and repay those who reject me. I will make my arrows drunk with blood, and my sword will devour flesh, the blood of the slaughtered and the captives, and the heads of the enemy leaders. Deuteronomy 32, verse 43, Rejoice with him, you heavens, and let all of God's angels worship him. Rejoice with his people, you Gentiles, and let all the angels be strengthened in him. For he will avenge the blood of his children. He will take revenge against his enemies. He will repay those who hate him and cleanse his people's land. Clearly, the content of Deuteronomy 32 fits the imagery of Revelation chapter 15. The Song of Moses reaches its ultimate fulfillment as a prophecy through the seven last plagues and the establishment of God's millennial kingdom. The fifth thing that we see in this passage is that the victorious saints sing the Song of the Lamb. This song includes important Old Testament references and prophecies. In Revelation chapter 15, verse 4, we see, All the nations will come and worship before you, for your righteous acts have been revealed. This is drawn from Psalm 86, verse 9, where we read, All nations whom you have made shall come and worship before you, O Lord, and they shall glorify your name. In Psalm 98, verse 2, The Lord has made known his salvation. He has revealed his righteousness in the sight of the nations. Another important prophecy in Isaiah chapter 66, verse 23, And it shall be, From new moon to new moon, and from Sabbath to Sabbath, all mankind will come to bow down before me, says the Lord. Also in Zechariah chapter 14, verse 16, Then it will come about that any who are left of all the nations that went against Jerusalem will go up from year to year to worship the King, the Lord of hosts, and to celebrate the Feast of Booths. And it will be that whichever of the families of the earth does not go up to Jerusalem to worship the King, the Lord of hosts, there will be no rain on them. So we see that during God's millennial kingdom, the nations will come from Sabbath to Sabbath and from one festival to another to worship God at his holy capital in Jerusalem. Moving on now to Revelation chapter 15, verse 5. After these things I looked, and the temple of the tabernacle of testimony in heaven was opened, and the seven angels who had the seven plagues came out of the temple, clothed in linen, clean and bright, and girded around their chests with golden sashes. Then one of the four living creatures gave to the seven angels seven golden bowls, full of the wrath of God, who lives forever and ever. And the temple was filled with smoke from the glory of God and from his power, and no one was able to enter the temple until the seven plagues of the seven angels were finished. The first thing that we see in this passage is that there are seven golden bowls full of God's wrath. God depicted the first set of judgments in the book of Revelation as a scroll with seven seals. He depicted the next set of judgments as seven trumpet blasts. This final set of seven last 
plagues uses a liquid analogy. The plagues are poured out. Here, seven angels receive seven golden bowls full of the wrath of God. This liquid analogy matches the earlier comment that the beast's followers will drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is mixed in full strength in the cup of his anger. In ancient times, wine was usually diluted with water. But here we see that God's cup is full strength, undiluted. There is no mercy for the followers of the beast. In the ancient world, wine was also usually consumed from a cup. But God's wrath is so great that his one cup is able to fill seven golden bowls, showing how great a punishment this is going to be. The second thing that we see in this passage is that smoke fills the sanctuary. John sees the Holy of Holies in the heavenly tabernacle open up the curtains drawn back, and the smoke from the glory of God and from his power fills the sanctuary. No one is able to enter the sanctuary until the seven plagues of the seven angels are finished. This imagery is another Old Testament allusion to God's tabernacle and temple on the earth. After Moses and the children of Israel built the tabernacle in the wilderness of Sinai, we see in Exodus chapter 40, verse 34, Then the cloud covered the tent of meeting, and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. Moses was not able to enter the tent of meeting because the cloud had settled on it, and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. Also, after Solomon built the temple and brought the Ark of the Covenant inside in First. Kings chapter 8 verse 10, it happened that when the priests came from the holy place, the cloud filled the house of the Lord, so that the priests could not stand to minister because of the cloud, for the glory of the Lord filled the house of the Lord. So again, we see this Old Testament imagery making its way into the text of the book of Revelation. So to summarize what we've studied so far, we saw that in the second half of Revelation chapter 11, the seventh trumpet sounded, which signified the first general resurrection of the dead and the return of Jesus Christ. Then, in Revelation chapter 12 and 13, there was another vision of a celestial woman, the red dragon, the sea beast, and the land beast, which represented God's people from the time of Jesus down through the conclusion of the Great Tribulation, in conflict with the devil, the beast, and the false prophet. This formed a flashback for John to show what would happen up through the end of the Great Tribulation. Then, in chapters 14 and 15, there is a prologue that sets the stage for the pouring out of God's seven last plagues. In chapter 14, we saw three angels with a warning for the earth, and the harvest of the earth occurs. In chapter 15 now, we see the seven golden bowls containing God's seven last plagues being given to the seven angels who will pour out these plagues in Revelation chapter 16.